how much do you, you said you have a lot of volunteers. How much do you kind of rely on community resources as a way to, you know, just be in the world? <laughs> oh, that's a great question too. I love these questions. The, what, well, I have a little bit of a subversive it rebel in me. So I love having the volunteers come in, not just for what they can share with the young people, but also so they can be in a space to see what it's like right, being right. run by young people, right? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I love it when they can come in and be a part of this community and see, oh my gosh, these kids are playing unsupervised, right? <laughs> right? But, and they're okay. And they're, they're working out conflicts and they're navigating being here together. And this is amazing. And they, they get to choose what they want to spend their time with. And, and one of the things that I want to say is that even though we have people that come into our spaces, members that are like, I totally want to do this thing. I can finally study medieval Indian weaponry. <laughs> we have just as many people that are like, I don't know. I don't know what I want. I don't know who mm -hmm. I am. I don't know what to do. And so that's, you know, uh, we had a member describe it once, like we're holding the walls back of the, you know, the world or society so that they have that time and space to figure those things out within their minds that kind of is a theft when you're right. in public right. school. It's not kind of, it is. They, it is stolen from you. That inner life and that freedom to explore yourself mm -hmm. is gone. And so we definitely get people that don't know who they are, what they want. But to go back to the support from the larger community, I like to think that other cultures have more of a, a freedom with young people being outside within the community mm. than we kind of do in America with mm. like the let grow campaign, like let kids go out and play. And I really love our location in Leesburg. I love, except for that one time with the police officer, <laughs> we've only had one other issue. And that was one kid that would go to, we have a candy shop that everybody mm. can walk to, which is thrilling. And they had free hot chocolate. And so mm. he was struggling with cleaning up after himself. I don't, it wasn't anything other than he went in and made a hot chocolate. And he was so excited. He left without realizing he left this huge mess in a mm. store. And so they had asked different Emberg members they said, Hey, you guys can't come back anymore because of mm. this. And so we had a you know, that came up as an issue at one of our community meetups, which is how do we navigate this? And once again, and this is the thing that I really want to drive home. Young people are kind people. They are mm. not like Lord of the flies, right? They <laughs> care for each other and they want to work out problems. And yes, we make mistakes and yes, we don't make the greatest choices sometimes, but instead of being angry and there were people that were angry they couldn't go back to the, the candy store but it also was how do we help how do we help this person what can we do to fix the harm at this candy store that was caused like how do we fix this and how do we help this person and that all came from them mm -hmm. that was not staffed and it just comes from within just like the person that you know was struggling with being on the roof it was we want to give them a chance we're willing to work on this mm -hmm. and so they came up with a plan which was okay we're going to write an apology letter and we're going to talk to him and show him how to clean up. Maybe he doesn't even know how, maybe nobody ever told him this and they pull all their money together and they bought flowers and they went back and they said, we're, we're, we want to apologize, but we also accept if you still don't want us to come back mm -hmm. and we're willing to accept that. But this is just nonviolent communication also has methods of complimenting and thanking people and apologizing. And part mm -hmm. of it is, this is what we, you know, observation. This is how we felt. This is how it looks like you felt. These are your needs. These are our needs. And this is what we're going to do. And then how can we fix it? What can, what are your, what is your request from us? And, and we worked, they worked it out. Like staff wasn't involved with that. They all did it themselves. And, and eventually they were allowed to come back to the candy shop. And so to have a community that's also willing to, right. to trust them and, Shout out to the Sunflower Shack <laughs> that they were willing to let these kids make this mistake and accept their apology and give them the feedback and a request of what their needs are. That's what we're really grateful. And that just keeps coming up. So I think trusting kids mm -hmm. and also but trusting adults to, to trust kids too is something that I think is worth reflecting on. Mm -hmm. 
This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Burr.